Alright, peace and blessings all. Uh the first thing I'd like to say, free Malachi Kobe in New York. And to everyone listening to this, make it your business to check out the documentary series called Mysteries Behind Closed Doors. Again, that documentary is called Mysteries Behind Closed Doors. You can check that out on YouTube. You can Google that. My advice to you, Google that ASAP. Again, free Reverend Dr. Malachi Kobe in New York. All right. Now, just in case you didn't know, you tuned into another installment of the Black Pages mixtape. This is volume number four. I'm the voice of the Black Pages, Tahoe Telpasare. Uh, now, in this installment of the Black Pages, I want to address a topic that's harming our people on many different levels. And also, that is the title of this installment of the Black Pages, called this Blatantly Sex. You understand that? And that's the topic we're addressing today on this, on this installment of the Black Pages. Now, I find it necessary to address this because we as a people suffer from such mental, physical, and social abuse as a result of miseducation, lack of education, and straight-up propaganda that's projected us in regards to this topic right here. And just to kind of touch on the propaganda and, and the miseducation on this topic, a lot of us, in, in regards to this, we learn about sex uh, um, too early. Uh, before our time, we miseducated about it. We learned from people who are unqualified to teach us about it. Um, it's it's a real touchy subject, and uh, we saturated with all these images, all these over sexualized images as it pertains to the media and everything like that. So we're just gonna address this topic. Uh, you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, not to mention that in this day and time, this is how they come at our leaders. That's how they come at our leaders and powerful people to bring them down. Not even in this day and time, but it's been a trend. It's been a constant trend. This is how they come at our people. Um, they use sex as a weapon. Now, this is such a vast subject. I don't intend to thoroughly cover it in this entirely, but to merely give the listener the ammunition needed for further uh, dissection of this topic so you can see through the propaganda that's put out in this society. Uh, because if we were to thoroughly address this, it would be many volumes, but we just need to have the eyes to see through what they put out. So when you see a movie, when you see a commercial, when you see anything out there in society, you don't look at it for entertainment purposes. You don't look at it for uh, whatever purpose that is put out there for. You look at it and you dissect it and you see through it because it's it, a lot of things that we see in, the, in today's society, it's a weapon to, to be used against us. With that being said, I'm going to fast forward this to a... Um, Quote from an interview um, that the Final Call dot com news did with Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Uh, Dr. Francis Cress Wilson is one of our most valuable scholars. If anybody's not familiar with her book, The ISIS Papers, Keys to Color, I advise you to check it out. You know, make that a part of your, your collection and, and a part of your roller decks in, in, in the back of your brain. You, you understand me? All right, but we're going to jump right into this quote. I look at the system of racism having come into being consciously because white population recognized after they circumnavigated the globe that they were a tiny minority, fewer than one-tenth of the people on the planet, and they were genetically recessive compared to the genetic dominance of people who produce color. They realized that they could be genetically annihilated, and white people could, as a collective people, disappear. They worked out a system for white survival, which entails dominating all of the black, brown, red, and yellow people on the planet. So racism is a behavioral system for the survival of white people. I would advise black people and other people of color that since the practice of racism is the practice of white genetic survival, that the expectation that people who classify themselves as white can change this behavior is a high expectation. Black people must finally understand that white people are playing a white survival game which has to inferiorize the functioning of black and other people of color. Okay, end quote. Okay, now a lot of you out there are probably wondering, you know, it's supposed to be about sex. What does this directly have to do with sex? Well, in reality, everything. Because we have to kind of think about this from a term of what it is in totality. Because the purpose of sex is reproduction. Okay, so they fear our ability to reproduce okay and, and because they know that it'll actually kill them because okay two black people can have a white baby in in, in the form of an albino but two white people it is is they're not going to have a, a black baby okay um so when it comes to our leaders and sex 
it's a form of castration. When they come to, to our, they come at our leaders with sex, it's a form of castration. And Dr. Chris, Francis Cress Wilson, she's also spoke about this in other lectures as far as uh, castration and how you know white people are the main people who actually deal with castration, how it ties into the penis and everything, uh, whatever have you. But when you destroy a person's genitals, it's symbolic of destroying uh, their power and. All throughout society, as mentioned in her book, The ISIS Papers, um, there are ph phallic symbols all over society. And just, you know, the the gun is a phallic symbol. Um, the cigar uh, is a black phallic symbol. You see all your, your gangsters, your important people, your bosses, so to speak, or whatever. They sitting back puffing cigars or whatever. Whether they inhaling or not, they puffing cigars. So it's a symbol of power. It's a black phallic symbol. Um, in contrast, cigarettes are a... White phallic symbol So just to kind of put that in perspective right there um, But we're going to move on To a quote From Reverend Dr. Malachi Cobina York In the actual fact book series Actual fact number 21 uh, The image of the beast And this is page 36 I'm going to quote this And the, the, what he goes into here is what they refer to As tying in the vine He discusses this in another book of his Called Set the, Set the Record Straight and He talks about how basically how the people In the Middle East and the people in all these countries You know they can They look the way they look on TV You know and they, it might be an African country Or something like that but these people look the way they look On TV because they've tied They've done what's called tied in the vine Now let's go right in this quote Okay the Caucasian first sent the harlots, the Jezebels, into a land. They mix their seed to breed half breeds, but because they're not accepted as Caucasoids, no matter how light or if their hair becomes fur, not accepted. They seek out others to mix with. They say, I want a man with good hair. That meant straight or curly. And light eyes meant hazel eyes and or red bone women. You see, all the stars today use red bones in their videos, making the next generation of girls who are dark skinned with woolly hair and dark eyes want perms, bleach, uh, their skin contacts, and light makeup to make them look like the harlot or queen who rides this beast. So they put on TV and in cinemas, Africa is a bad place, make us look bad in their media to make you not want to go home or proud to be African, your own dress image is all an evil plot, okay? So basically, that's what he's describing in that excerpt from the actual fat book series, uh, number 21, Image of the Beast. He's basically talking about um, them making you want to be like other than self and kind. You don't want to be like yourself no more. You want to be like them. And they, and at the end of the day, they really emulate emulating you because um, why would a person get Botox? Why would a person have full lips? Why would a person get um, ass injections? Why would a person get, you know, fake titties and all this stuff like this? Okay. Um, I'm going to take another quote from uh, the image of the beast, the same scroll, the same actual fact. Um, if they're in control of your tones, your colors, as you sit and watch TV or cinema, you're not thinking how the colors you see each have an effect on your brain, your mind, your emotions, feelings, and moods. Just sitting and watching colors change before your eyes and the sounds of their voices, the music they choose behind what you're watching, all these are taking control of your subconscious mind, okay? Um, this shows... How they use images to make these genetically recessive people seem overly attractive, all right? And we, we're going to address this um, about the difference between our natural sexuality versus their artificial, over-exaggerated, over-accentuated, over-sexualization, right? Over the top, you feel me? Uh, because we, we have, I cannot stress this enough, these are the biggest liars on the face of the earth I mean you, we cannot stress that enough Just like we said in Black Pages Volume 2 Okay We're dealing with a group of people Who exaggerate everything They have small penises So they have to have Silicone injected penises And penis pumps And penis enlargement Etc um, Extends And all this crap uh, We didn't deal with that Because We were naturally Well endowed Okay, as men, and we didn't have Cialis and Viagra, we had natural conditioning and practices that allowed us to maintain erections and to be able to satisfy women. Not to mention, we had sex up under mental control. You understand that? Um, there was no such thing, there was no word in our language for rape until they came, because nobody got raped. You understand that? We had 
sex up under mental control, which is the most important thing. And we're going to talk about this in this installment of the Black Pages. We didn't uh, we didn't have these problems until we came to a society and we were influenced by these over-sexualized people because of their deficiencies in that area. They had to over-accentuate certain things, and we really have to address these things in order to kind of put these things to bed and kind of at least know them when we see them because like with these people we can't really we, we can't take anything at face value we have to expect trickery and we have to expect um the bait and switch so we really have to know what we're looking at so that's basically some of the things that we're gonna really touch on in this installment of the black pages volume four blatantly entitled sex hope y'all enjoy <laughs> 